um, I think <laughs> the rest of will attest to the fact that I, I am, and Professor Barbie will attest to the fact that I have been the biggest proponent of this new policy. In fact, I'm not happy with the university just having a, a uh, prohibition against relationships with undergraduates, but leaving it sort of tenuous as it relates to graduate students. There should be absolutely no relationships, but more relationships between any faculty and staff member and a student, whether they're undergraduate, graduate, or in high school. None. It, it, the, the position of power that a professor has cannot and should never cross and take advantage of that. And I, in trying to explain to the university when I came and I testified before the president's uh, commission that he put together at the, at the conference, was that it, it works against the entire school. Because if someone's having a more relationship with a professor, the other professors are going to, that's a special student, they're probably going to get special grades from the friends of the professor. And then pretty soon, they say, well, it's only in that department. No, it's not. Because if that person gets is the valedictorian or the top student in the business and professional school, will probably be the top student in the school <laughs> and might become valedictorian in the university and then go on to graduate school and can't write a decent sentence. It's the university that is embarrassed by that. And so it really is unfair and should not be tolerated at any level in, in between any faculty and any person of uh, position and responsibility. And I have fought very hard with the university. I'm not done with the fight, and <laughs> the rest of I are fighting this at, at DOE. We've been trying to get it since December, um, March, actually, when I got the university to do it in March. I tried to get DOE to do it. It's got to be implemented soon because there can be zero tolerance of any amorous relationships between faculty members and students. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to say I totally support everything he said. Ditto was an understatement. You know, even in the military, there is a thing if there is fraternization. There is no place for this in the workplace, in the school place. Students entrust their professors to give them the best guidance for a proper and great education. When you take that and you violate that, you take away the integrity and the dignity of how a program should be run. And you can go on and talk about the favoritisms when there is that kind of situation in the school place. So do I support the ban? Definitely. Do I support the efforts of what my speaker is doing and working closely with Senator Angela? Definitely. Ladies and gentlemen, this is really, really serious. And this, I mean, a ban on it those kind of relationships has to be far, by far the, the, the most critical thing that should be in place. <coughs> relationships happen outside the school grounds or the workplace. There should not be that kind of privatization. Um, um, for me, I, I've seen this in the various places that I've worked. Uh, as a teacher, a colleague of mine uh, took advantage of one of the students and uh, engaged in, uh, you know, what they called consensual sex um, during the time he was uh, working at that school. And personally, I felt that this was very wrong. Because as teachers, we are entrusted to protect children. We are entrusted to guide them towards a, a, a path that that can lead them to success, not to tear away at their dignity and the fabric of their life. Also in the military, I'm a captain now, but you know, there's, you know, there are cases of fraternization within the organization that I'm in. And I've seen them use it to, uh, to use it as a way of intimidation to get what they want. 
how I see them use it as a way of sexual assault and sexual harassment. So this is a very dangerous issue. And this, you know, needs to be enforced more, and we need to continually speak about this and continually advocate against it. And I know with the struggles that UOG had with the, the professor and, and some of the cases that are against him, again, as a teacher or any professional, you never, you never cross that boundary and take advantage of someone because of the power you are in. The power that you hold should be used for service and to also protect the dignity of the people that you serve. You would think that a professor is already bound by ethical and professional standards and that you wouldn't need to have a very explicit ban against sexual relations or romance or any amorous type of relationship. But unfortunately, um, there does exist in, in those situations the human factor. You know, it's very, it's very difficult to regulate human relations and human behavior. And I think that's where sometimes things go wrong. You know, you have impressionable, young impressionable minds uh, between the ages of, say, undergrad, between 18 and 22 years old. You know, you're, you're, you're young adults and you're just ripening into that type of relationship, those long-term relationships. And sometimes when you have a situation where someone is, is quite learned, quite impressive, uh, that infatuation sets in, you know, you admire them so much. And when that person in that capacity takes advantage of your, your attentiveness, uh, your infatuation, your adoration, whatever it is, uh, then it becomes exploitation. So I do support a ban, a specific, very clear ban on that because it's just too fine a line. And people will say, hey, you know, they're adults. Let it be. But there's a difference though when you're in a position of power. And that, that line, crossing that line between your professional standard and your ethical obligation to your student who's a subordinate can be very, very shaky if you yourself maybe are not um, a, a mature person, a mature old middle-aged person. Um, or you you're just not responsible or you want to take advantage of the situation. So I think it's necessary to have those things in place because it not only, it not only sets the bar again for the professional, but it puts the potential victim, the student, on notice that, hey, you know, don't, don't let that happen to you if it should because it's really an inappropriate uh, type of situation just because of the subordinate and the insubordinate uh, factor involved. So yes, I support it. Thank you. I, I'm also in full support of this policy. You know, um, sexual assault, sexual misconduct, sexual harassment are all grounded in an imbalance of power. And so in a school setting, the teacher is assumed to be that one who has the power to either uh, help that student succeed or to fail them. And so to the extent that the, the power relations and the, the, the power um, is not really equal, then we need to ensure that we do everything we can through this policy to prevent the victimization of our students. Ladies and gentlemen, this is happening, not only at the university level, but it is happening in the workplace, it's happening in the school system. And when students become victims, it's a lifelong suffering for that student. It's suffering of being marginalized, being put to shame, feeling inadequate, but it doesn't go their way. And when they try to report the discomfort of what that professor or that teacher had said to them, then they would say, oh, they would dismiss it. To say, oh, that's just all in your imagination. This is happening. And so it's unfortunate 
that we have to have a policy that is this explicit. But it has to happen. Because once a student, once a student is victimized, their life is changed forever. It may just be, you think, a sexual harassment. Maybe it's just words. Maybe there wasn't any touching. But you don't know, you can't measure the impact of that harassment or those words to the concept, to the identity of that student, whether it's a, a female or a male. It cuts across gender. Women can be uh, guilty of harassment and misconduct as much as males can be guilty of misconduct, sexual misconduct, and sexual harassment. So we have to take this seriously. We have to not only have the policy, we need to ensure that everyone is aware of this from the time that they enter school and even at home all the way to graduate school. We have to keep talking about what is acceptable and what is not acceptable and we have to empower the victims to speak out when they feel a level of discomfort rather than to just kind of like say, oh, well, you know what? That girl anyways is, already has a child, so she's an adult, it's okay. You know what, maybe she was asking for it. You know, we still hear that. Look at the way she dresses. We have to examine ourselves. When we hear about these, these, these complaints, 